It feels like just weeks ago, but it was actually Monday when GB News superstar and then Tory MP Lee Anderson defected to Reform UK. And his departure is starting to look like the final nail in the coffin for the Conservatives. Lee Anderson might be characterised as a divisive figure by the London-based media, but he's a totemic figure for potential Tory voters and disgruntled Labour supporters. Lee Anderson talks like a normal person, like a real human being. And his views, which are dangerously controversial in Islington, are just plain common sense in the Red Wall and beyond. Lee Anderson wants to keep taxes to a sensible level to boost the economy and put money in the pockets of ordinary working Brits. He thinks that biological sex matters, that calls for genocide in our cities should be punished, and that immigration should be legal, orderly and at sustainable levels. Well, lock him up and throw away the key. What a monster! Now, it is my view that Lee's comments about the London Mayor Sadiq Khan being pals with terrorist sympathisers was wrong. But suspending the whip and effectively chucking him out of the party was a big mistake in the absence of letting Anderson clarify the points he was making. But all of that is ancient history now, as is this Tory administration by the looks of it. A Westminster insider tells me that some cabinet ministers and backbenchers are mulling over a replacement for Rishi Sunak now that an autumn election looks inevitable. Reform UK now have a big fat feather in their cap and this no-nonsense voice of the people will now be banging the drum for the Tories' rivals. After a week in which the government have grappled with a new definition of extremism, Lee Anderson is anything but extreme, which is why it's extremely foolish that they let him go. Talking of the importance of biological sex, this week the popular Cheltenham Racing Festival announced that they've axed Ladies Day. More proof, if you needed it, that women are quietly being cancelled. Meanwhile, a famous women's only outdoor pond in North London has voted to allow trans women in to bathe. Biological men are winning female beauty contests and Women of the Year awards. They're breaking records in women's sport and are being banged up in women's jails. Can the ladies not just have one day in the year when they can wear a posh frock at the races? How much of this is about caving in to trans extremists? Well, you tell me. But we've got good news on that front. Extreme trans ideology, which says that men are women and vice versa, and which does the trans community no favours whatsoever when they deserve love and respect, well, this whole extreme movement is in retreat. NHS England have now banned the prescribing of puberty blockers to children. These pills stopped their bodies developing, and it's extraordinary that that was ever allowed. Meanwhile, our erstwhile former Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who identifies as a woman that was Prime Minister for 44 days, today wanted to present a bill to Parliament called the Health and Equality Act, which reasserts the legal status of biological sex and effectively stops biological men from entering women-only spaces and participating in women's sport. Now, the Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch, is warm on the idea and former Home Secretary Suella Braverman backs it all the way. So guess which party played parliamentary games this afternoon to make sure the debate didn't happen and therefore put the kibosh on this sensible plan? You guessed it, the Labour Party, led by none other than Sir Keir Starmer, a man who struggles to define what a woman is, even though he's married to one. I hope Liz Truss is ultimately successful with this legislation. Perhaps her legacy won't be an economic crash and being outlived by a lettuce after all. And last but not least, crisis on a Friday. McDonald's have had trouble selling their burgers due to a nationwide IT failure. Starving Brits are furious. They're all milk shaken up. It's fillet, no fish. The IT department are nuggets. What a McFlurry they've made of this. Yes, they've had their chips. Bosses are too chicken to do anything about it, effectively telling their customers to burger off. They've made an unhappy meal of it. Ronald McDonald is now having a worse week than Rishi Sunak. It's been a bun fight for the world's biggest restaurant chain. And let me tell you, I'm not loving it. Nina and I are off to Burger King. 
And that was my Friday Big Opinion.